Hello. Hi, Nidia. Hi, Saida. Hi, Rodrigo. Can you guys hear me? Yes. All right. I'm sorry. I was having some trouble connecting today, but I'm here. Okay. Enjoy. All right. Very good. So, uh, Nidia, thank you so much for your homework. Uh, Saida also, and I had the other homework sent, but I was not able to download it, but she's not in right now. Just let me, um, just remind me when, when everybody's back so I can ask her to resend it. No, Saida, Saida, yours I was not able to listen to. I was able to listen to Astrid's, but not yours, Saida. Okay, but so maybe, I sent. Yes, I know you sent it, but I was not able to open it. I don't know why. Maybe you can like resend it later. That's okay. I can just listen to it. Okay. Okay. I, I, I mean, I don't know if it's my phone or not, but I was able to listen to uh, um, to the other girl, to um, Astrid and to um, and to uh, Nidia, but not yours. But that's okay. You can try sending it later. All right, so guys, welcome. Hi, Rodrigo. Hi, Rodrigo. You guys. All right, Rodrigo, it's okay. I'm having some kind of problem today too, but let's. Um, Let's try to work it out. Okay, so today we're talking about question five, integrated question five, which is a little bit different than yesterday. Remember that yesterday we were talking about integrated question three, where we had to do some reading, some listening, and based on those two resources, we're, we're supposed to give or talk about their opinion about that matter and like why, all right? Now, this one is a little bit different because, um, we're not going to do reading. Hi, Freddy. We're not going to do reading today, only listening. Okay, so we're going to listen to a short uh, conversation or lecture. And based on that, we're going to be talking about. Okay, so uh, that's what we're going to be working on today. I just want to show you this one. I, you probably already listened to it, but I just want to kind of go over with you. So just to make sure that you guys know what's going on. So as I said, this is question, integrated question five. All right, so this is what we are going to be doing, or this is how they work. You listen to a conversation, then you have 20 seconds to prepare, which yesterday we have 10 more, because we had 30, remember? And then again, you have 60 seconds to speak, the same amount, okay? So remember that this time we're not reading, we're listening and then 20 seconds to prepare and then 20 seconds to speak. So let's just listen to it on the same page. 60 seconds to speak. I'm just gonna go over it. So five. There you then go. you will have 30 seconds that to prepare yesterday. your response and 60 seconds to speak your answer. And this is like today's, this one right here. Question five, listen to a conversation. 20 seconds to prepare. 60 seconds to speak. For question five, you listen to part of a conversation. Then you'll have 20 seconds to prepare your response and 60 seconds to speak your answer. Now let's look more closely at what these campus situation questions look like and what they will be asking you to do. This is For question three, where you have both reading and listening passages, you will be asked what the opinion is of a speaker in the listening passage and you will need to explain how that person's opinion relates to the issues presented in the reading passage. So, you're essentially summarizing and combining information from two sources. For question five, where the listening passage is a conversation about a campus problem and one or more solutions, you will need to describe the problem and then give your opinion about what the solution should be. So in these uh, questions, they want you to give your opinion based on what you listen to, okay? So that's why it's really important for you to pay attention and understand what they are talking about because then you have to say, for example, I, would, I agree with this situation because, and then you give your reasons why, all right? But again, 
As we go on, I will show you the presentation and I will show you the questions, which by the way, I'm already sending the presentation. It's a little bit heavy, that's why it's taking a while to upload, but it's gonna be there, all right? So you have it also. So that's the idea with these questions, okay? So if you have to describe the problem, tell us what the problem is. Like you have, remember that you have one minute. So in one minute, you need to summarize what the problem is or the situation is, and then what is your opinion the solution should be, all right? Or whatever they are like precisely asking you, all right? Approach tips, don't speak too quickly. Let's speak at a normal pace. Time yourself when you practice. All right, this is very important guys and this is gonna help you through like the whole speaking section. When you do your responses, try not to speak quickly. I know time flies and you kind of feel pressure that you have one minute, all right? But try to kind of like, yesterday Freddie said, uh, after the class he said, I got nervous, all right? You need to control that. And that of course, that's natural, all right? You're being timed, everybody's watching you, your Facebook Live, so the whole world listen to your response, all right? So it's a lot of pressure on you, but then again, you have to like, careful not to speak quickly. Some people misunderstand the difference between speaking quickly and being fluent, all right? So make sure that you know those two differences. One thing is to be fluent, one thing is like to speak like a matraca, like we say in Spanish, and then nothing is being understood, all right? Mm -hmm. You have to speak at a normal pace. I will share, if we have time, I will share with the rest of the class Nidia's response. She sounded very, very like a normal pace, like she was so relaxed and she was very like tranquilita so she sounded like you can understand her point and you can understand what she's saying all right because she was talking at a normal pace i know it's different being on the spot right here than for example being like at home all right but the idea is to get for you to like you know to to actually get to that point all right and then if you guys are going to take this exam it's very good for you to time yourselves all right so that's why the practice is on the platform, that you will have time to practice and practice and practice. Y el más bonito me lo manda, all right? <laughs> the one that you say, that's the one, all right? That's the one you send me, okay? Right now, for you to get practice, for you to get comfy at what you're saying and what you're doing, y de repente usted se escucha y dice, oh, mira que feo dije eso. So you do it again, all right? So that's okay. That's the idea, for you to practice and practice and practice. The more you practice, the better you get at this, all right? So let's keep on listening to this. How to approach these kind of speaking questions. Number one, be careful not to speak too quickly because this might make it difficult for the reader to understand you. The questions are designed so that if you speak at a normal pace, you will have enough time to give a complete response. You will get better at this if you time yourself when you practice. Question three. Listen carefully to the speaker's reason for agreeing or disagreeing with points made in the reading. Make sure you summarize the opinion of the speaker. For question five, as you listen, focus on identifying and understanding what the problem and possible solutions are. Then, write down a few keywords or ideas on your scratch paper. But remember, you need to do more than summarizing your response. You also need to give your opinion. And that's very important. Today, when we do the practice, you're not only summarizing because it might take, like, if you don't like time yourself properly, then you will speak more than some, I mean, you will take longer summarizing than actually giving your opinion. And you will have like five seconds left and you're gonna say, I, and I agree. That's not the point, all right? So you make sure that you have like, if you have 60 seconds, you summarize for 30 and then you give your opinion for the other 30 minutes, I mean, seconds that are left. All right, so kind of like balance it out. So don't spend too much time summarizing. Use most of your time explaining why it is the best solution. The scoring criteria. All right, we're not going to listen to that. We're going to stop right here with that. We're going to go back here and this is... Um, no la vi entrar. All right, so this is the presentation here that we're doing today, the one that we're working on, integrated question five, and this is the first one. We have, let's see, I think we have Three. five questions. Yeah, about that. Eight. So uh, the Listen idea to... is, 
that some of you will repeat it and that's okay, all right? I mean, the idea is for us to practice. I'm not gonna say the same thing that Roberto says. I'm not gonna say the same thing that Nidia or Rodrigo say, so it's okay, all right? So the idea is for you to listen and say, ah, oh, okay, that's how they do it. Ah, oh, okay, that's how you, you, like, you can pronounce it and stuff like that. So there we go. So this is what we're going to be working on. Let's see, because yesterday, Saida, Nidia, and Astrid were not able to participate in class today, all right? So, Saida, are you ready? Yes. <laughs> all right, Saida, so remember that these questions, there's no really reading, I mean, there's not a reading passage, we'll do the listening together as yesterday, but I mean, the listening, it takes whatever it takes. And after that, I'll give you 20 seconds, all right? And on those 20 seconds, I do advise from you to take like quick notes, all right? If like, if you're right now, you can actually do it while you're listening, all right? On the real one, they won't let you because they have, they give you 20 seconds to prepare. So they think that's enough, all right? But right now, because we're practicing, as you're listening, you can be taking notes plus the other 20 seconds. That's a little bit of cheating, but that's okay. All right? So, okay. that. here we go. So, this is the one. We're going to listen to a conversation between two students, okay? Don't worry okay. about time on I mean, worry a little bit. The thing is, like, to have fun, all right? So, here the students are discussing two possible places to meet to finalize their presentation plans describe their problems so remember keep in mind what they are asking you this is the key girls and, and boys all right if you understand the listening it's fine but if you misunderstood the question then you're in trouble these kind of questions question five they ask you to describe the problem all right then a state or say which of the two solutions you prefer side that okay and then you have to explain why so remember, you have to tell me one thing. You have 30, I mean, 60 seconds. In 60 seconds, you have to tell me what the problem was, all right? And it state that's the two solutions they gave and which one do you prefer, all right? So don't lose those, two, uh, those three things in mind, all right? Keep those in mind and you're going to do fine, all right? So enough talking. And I don't know what happened. <laughs> All right, here you go. Well, I'm going to have it little like this, so I think it, you can listen to it. All right, Saidita. So listen, everybody listening. I mean, I want everybody paying attention. I know you do. And try to be saying, okay, they are talking about this. That's the problem. That's, those are the solutions. And I agree with that one. Although I'm not asking you. All right, but that's the idea to practice, okay? Okay. Okay. Three. Listen to a conversation between two students. I think we should meet early next week to finalize our presentation. What do you think? Yeah, I think you're right. I'm free on Monday at 2. Yeah, that's good for me. Do you want me to book a study room at the library again? Hmm, I don't know. It's a nice, quiet place to get work done, but I kind of like to drink coffee while we work. Since they don't allow drinks in the study rooms, what do you think of just meeting at the student union? Um... I think there's something going on at the union Monday afternoon. What was it? Ah, you're right. They're having some sort of book fair. Yeah, that's it. Lots of publishers are going to be setting up displays and everything. I'd really like to go to that. Me too. But what about our project? Monday is really the last day we can work on it before we have to do the presentation. Well, why don't we meet at the book fair and then go to the cafeteria and make the final preparations over a coffee? Don't you think it might be pretty noisy? Nah, I get a lot of studying done in the cafeteria. Yeah, but with the book fair, there'll be lots of extra people milling around. It could be really chaotic. Just getting a coffee might mean spending half our time waiting for the cafeteria lines. I hadn't thought about that. Maybe we should meet in the library. Do you know how much ahead of time we have to reserve a study room? I don't think it matters. You can just walk in, and if one is available at that moment, you can book it right then and there. Well, should we take a risk and not reserve a study room? We could meet in the student union, and if it is too noisy to work in the cafeteria, we could walk over to the library. Sounds good to me. The students are discussing two possible places to meet to finalize their presentation plans. Describe their problem. 
Then state which of the two solutions you prefer and explain why. All right. So, Saida, I'll give you 20 seconds to prepare now. All right, Saida, you may begin. You have one minute. Okay, the two places are the cafeteria and the book store, but the, he said that he, he, she prefers that the cafeteria because she needs to take coffee. And, and the mom said that they prefer to the book store, but the two places are very crowded because in the cafeteria there are a lot of lines and in the bookstore are many people. Well, okay. um, they had a, a, ch a chance to to reserve in a in a study in in a study room, mm -hmm. but the finally uh, I think that they decide to finish the presentation on the cafeteria. All right. Okay. And what's the solution? And do you agree with it? Or explain uh, it? I solution for me, prepare, yeah, huh? the, 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 I prefer the cafeteria because I need to take coffee when <laughs> I study. <laughs> all right, okay, all right. Saida, okay, so i give you like a minute and five seconds, all right? Okay, so uh, remember that it's very important. I know you, that you guys are like under pressure and everything, but you need to like make sure that you understand what's going on and you understood pretty much everything. But did they mention a bookstore or did they mention the student union? Maybe I the student union. Ah, all right. Okay. Yes. Okay. All right. So that's why, right? I mean, the words are very related and everything. So you need to make sure, oops, you need to make sure that you really understand what's going on. All right. So what were the two places that you mentioned? Tell me um, again, Saida. Cafeteria. Uh huh. Um, the study room. All right. Okay. All right. Very good. Okay. We're going to stop like right there and then we're going to wa work with it later. All right. Let's see. Thank you, Saida. Saida, can you choose? Well, no. Right now we had Nidia and yeah, because the other girl's not in. So, Nidia, you're next. All right, ready? Yes, okay, yeah. very good. <laughs> all right, so we're gonna listen to this one, the same procedure, all right? You listen to, we listen to it together. I give you 20 seconds to prepare, and then the idea is for you to like actually answer the question. It says the man, you're gonna listen to conversation between two students again. The man expresses his opinion about the changes in the physical education requirement for students state his opinion and explain the reasons he gives for that opinion so the question here is a little bit different they are not really asking your opinion all right they are asking about his opinion all right so pay attention to that Nidia. all right ready i'm gonna play the audio right now if i find it there he goes four listen to a conversation between two students i hope they drop the physical education course requirements soon so that I don't have to take any of those classes. Do you? Personally, I think the decision's a mistake. Really? Why? I mean... I well, I guess the president's right about some students not wanting to take them, but lots of different studies have shown that being physically fit helps people to concentrate better. But really, students should take on responsibility for their own health, don't you think? I mean, they don't need an authority to force them. They should, but they don't. Students frequently get wrapped up in their studies to the detriment of their physical health. Many I've talked to say that they resent having to sign up for the courses, but when they are in the class, they find it stimulating and a good mental break from sitting in the library. Well, they're probably sports-minded. A lot of students, like me for instance, I've never been very good at sports. I absolutely dreaded going to my high school gym class and playing basketball. Well, that's a good point in favor of keeping the physical education courses. 
Currently, the department's able to offer classes in lots of different sports. The variety of classes offers something for everyone. If the requirements are dropped, those classes will be cut. And that hurts people like you who aren't good at competitive sports like basketball, but who could benefit from something non-competitive like aerobics. I must admit that I'm out of shape, but I still don't think it's the university's job to make me fit. But you probably won't take on the responsibility of getting into shape. And think of all the money that's already been spent on sports equipment and facilities. The equipment will go to waste or break and not get replaced. I think this is a very sad commentary on our university's priorities. There's nothing wrong with putting library facilities and labs at the top of the priority list. Well, that's true, but I'm still disappointed in this decision. The man expresses his opinion about the changes in the physical education requirements for students. State his opinion and explain the reasons he gives for that opinion. All right, Nidia. So you have 20 seconds starting now to prepare. All right, Nidia, now you have one minute to state his opinion and explain the reasons he gives for that opinion. You may start now. Uh, okay. Um, the, the guy is um, favored to keep the program, the PI programs in the university, mm -hmm. especially because um, the people, the university people doesn't, don't take care of their health. Okay. And they, Concentrate in libraries, uh, things like that. To be sitting in libraries that doesn't help to the health. And besides, there is a lot of um, spend on facilities to to do to do sports that will be lost if the programs of physical education will be cut. So he. He think he thinks it's good to keep the programs, uh, also to help the students, as to help the university or the facilities of the university, because of the investment that they have done on that. All right, All right. very good. Thank you, Nivia. Very good. I mean, if you notice, it's a matter of like really paying attention to what's going on. These um, conversations are not that complicated as the listening section of last week. Remember, they were very, very like techy or very like um, sophisticated words. This one's they're like talking about real life situations. Where do we meet? The library or the cafeteria? Are the courses being suspended or not? You know, it's kind of like more real life. And it's because they, what they want is to hear you speaking and to understand, like to see if you understand what's really going on. And that was pretty much it, Nidia. Very good. So he's in favor. I mean, he's against the university mm -hmm. cutting down these um, courses because it may, at the end of the day, people don't do anything for their own health. All right. Very good. Thank you, Nidia. That was very nice. Very good. All right. Freddy, are you up? Freddy, you're ready. Of course you are. Ready or not, here we go, my friend. Teacher, I think that the next uh, topic is the same that I talked yesterday. <laughs> are you serious? Agriculture class? Did you talk no, no, about that one? No, no, no. No, nah, it's not. But it might be related, but they're not asking the same thing. Okay. All right, it's okay. The last example, uh, we, uh, we watched it yesterday yeah yeah all right but if you notice oh i think that the presentation it's already up on your um on you guys i send it already so it's there in case you wanted it hold on i'm lost here okay so freddy ready all right so freddy remember this question i mean is the integrated question five you just do the listening then you have 20 seconds and then you have one minute all right so relax Nothing happens, just the whole, the whole world listens to you. Right? <laughs> I'm kidding. All right, okay.
listen to a part of a lecture in agriculture class, okay? So this is not a conversation, it's a lecture. Using points and examples from the lecture, explain how, go, uh, how goats are related to the spread of the certification. Goats, that's what it says, right? Okay, all right, Freddy, here we go. Five, listen to part of a lecture in an agriculture class. Since goats can survive on kinds of vegetation such as bushes and desert scrub, which are unsuitable for other domesticated herd animals, they're a logical means of subsistence for millions of rural inhabitants the world over. They're a valuable resource for milk and meat and can survive where other animals would starve. However, goats have also done considerable damage to delicate ecosystems, particularly those areas in danger of turning into deserts. Uh, the owners of goats have not kept a balance between goat numbers and the available vegetation. And because of that, overgrazing by goats has destroyed areas of bushes, desert scrub, and herbs, as well as woodland in sensitive environments. This animal does not discriminate about where it gets its nourishment and often will eat newly germinated plants thus preventing the establishment of new vegetation. Also, goats destroy woody plants, in other words, the kind of vegetation whose roots are important for stabilizing the soil. Now, plants need soil to anchor their roots and to provide them with water and nutrients, and the soil needs plants to provide the biological material from which new soil is created. Plants also hold the soil together, stopping it from being driven away by wind and rain. We can say that overgrazing by goats is one of the prime causes of the spread of deserts. Of course, it's not the goat itself that's to blame for the spread of desertification. It's the poor management of the animals that's responsible. What's needed is a large-scale educational program on the importance of soil conservation and the spread of techniques for properly managing grazing animals. Using points and examples from the lecture, explain how goats are related to the spread of desertification. All right, so now, Freddy, remember you have 20 seconds and concentrate on the question starting now. All right, Freddy, you may start giving your answer. Remember, you have one minute and explain how goats are related to the spread of the certification starting right now, Fred. Okay, uh, well, the teacher is talking about uh, um, the spread of the certification and he mentioned, uh, for example, the importance to plant different germinary plants that helps to fight the, the certification and, and helps uh, to conserve the soil. And um, he talks about uh, different animals to get, to contribute, to help uh, keep, and in good state the soil. For example, he mentioned goats. Mm -hmm. Go on. Yeah, and he talked, uh, also he talked about that, how we could take advantage of the rain. That is okay. a big point to, uh, to conserve the soil. All right. Okay, Freddy. Thank you. All right. So, Freddy, again, you need, you see here, the, he was, of course, talking about goats. The whole speech the professor was given about, like, the lecture he was given, he was talking about, uh, in this case, goats, all right, that they are kind of, like, destroying all the grasslands and everything because of the way they 
like um, eat in other words right so here the point is Freddy what I want you to see here and this is not only for Freddy you have to explain how goats especially I mean he did not talk about any other animal but goats all right through the whole lecture so you needed to explain how goats are related to the spread of desertification because you mentioned through the whole lecture some points what these goats do in a bad way because they're not really helping the environment here all right so remember that in these kind of questions you would need to point out like some of the um elements or ideas these professors said about these goats destroying in a way the grasslands and how they are responsible of the spreading of the desertification and he said it's not really the animal's fault it's the way or the poor management of the animal all right this is what we're going to do uh and this is for everybody for example freddy because this was your question what i want you to do freddy uh, because you already have the presentation you're going to listen to it again in your house and then I want you to pay attention and pay attention and pay attention. And then I want you to send the same, I mean, the same question, give me the same response. And you will realize that you can do way much better, all right? Because you have enough time to listen and listen and listen and listen over and over again, all right? The same thing, I want Saida to do the same thing for, with the first one. The presentation is already on the group on the whatsapp group so say that the the first one that was your question listen to it again and then resend me or send me your response on like a voice note all right you may do it okay. tonight or you may do it tomorrow but I, what i want you to do is to actually pay attention and understand and look at the answer go over it like i want you to really understand what they want you to talk about okay that's the key in this case, we were supposed to explain how goats, because they were not talking about any other animal. All right? So that's what we're going to be doing. All right, let's see. Uh, Rodrigo, are you ready, Rodrigo? Yes, teacher. All right, I, Rodrigo. I'm, I'm ready. Excellent. You were born ready, right? Yeah. Excellent. That's the way. All right. So again, Rodrigo, we're going to listen to part of another lecture in a criminal law class. All right. Use, listen to this using specific information from the lecture. Explain the professor's concern about changing the justice system and what needs to be done before reforms are made. That's what you have to concentrate on. All right. So let's listen to that. All right, okay. here we go. Six, listen to part of a lecture in a criminal law class. As you know, the basic principle of the American juvenile justice system is that children are different from adults. And it follows that the way the justice system deals with children should reflect these differences. When the principle was established, it provided for the individualizing of treatment and services to vulnerable children. However, this system is under threat. Critics say it's not tough enough, and also it fails to rehabilitate children. And some of you may agree. After all, criminal statistics point to a steadily increasing problem of youngsters committing crimes. But my concern is that young offenders may start to be treated as adults. Before any reforms are made, a rational examination of the whole system needs to be undertaken. As I see it, there are three key areas of research. The first is accountability. Okay, so in other words, how are juveniles different from adults in their understanding of criminal behavior? How do we assess their responsibility? Secondly, we need to evaluate risk. Risk evaluation. So, this means, how can we determine the chances of a given youth committing a crime? And how can we use this information to prevent the crime in the first place? The third area of research is susceptibility. 
we need to know how susceptible young people are to change. Can we assess a child's or a young person's likelihood of changing behavior or of responding to treatment? So, to repeat, accountability, risk evaluation, and a susceptibility to change. These three key areas of research should be based on a thorough understanding of child and adolescent development. We need experts from all relevant fields, as well as input from the general public. More needs to be learned about the origins, development, prevention, and treatment of juvenile crime. And that knowledge has to be spread among professionals and the community. In this way, eventual reforms of the system may really be able to tackle the growing problem. Using specific information from the lecture, explain the professor's concern about changing the justice system and what needs to be done before reforms are made. All right. Okay. You have 20 seconds to prepare right now. All right, Rodrigo, you may start. You have one okay. minute. Remember the question, yes. Okay, um, the, the, the teacher is talking about the, the system, the, use, the use, justice systems, and the difference between, between the, the form, between the reforms of, um, of the, the law, um between adulthood and and teenagers mm -hmm. and and then and the she talks about she talks about the form or the the way to 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 work with with Teenagers, for example, she talks about about risk, uh, risk, risk, and she talks about um, it's okay. I don't remember. It's okay. I don't yeah. remember. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a it's a big how it's a, a very it's big it's a long the, the audio. Yes, of course. Yes, it is. All right. Don't worry about it, Rodrigo. You're going you're gonna to have homework tonight anyway. So don't okay. worry about it. The okay. same thing. These, you're, I want you, when you finish class or tomorrow morning, whenever you have time, but before tomorrow's class, what I want you to do is I want you to listen to this one. Your question was number six, okay, on the PPT. It's already there with the audio. So I want you to listen to it again as many times as you need to, all right? until you get the answer of the question all right or what they want you to talk about because what they are asking you here is that you were supposed to explain the professor's concern what was her concern this is what i want you to think about within this question there are tiny questions okay it says explain the professor's concern about changing the justice system what i want you to go back is and think about is what is she concerned about okay are they going to treat the uh, the youngsters or the young people the same as uh, adults? What's the concern really going on here? And then after that, I want you to think, okay, the professor mentioned that needs to be done first before the reforms are made. And she made three clear points, okay? She's, she pinpointed them, all right? She said something about uh risk evaluation about susceptib susceptibility and there's another one right so i want you to go back rodrigo and and get these points all right once you have everything there i want you to record yourself y la más bonita me manda. Okay. okay all right <laughs> very okay. good okay don't worry about it all right my friend let's see uh, we have is maribel are you ready 
Maribel, are you there? And then we're going to do uh, Robert. Maribel, are you there? Maribel, Maribel? No, all right. Robert, are you ready? Robert, ready? Guillermo, are you ready? So, Maha, are you ready? Uh, no, everybody's hello, ready. <laughs> are you ready? All right, hold on. Maribel, are you ready? No. <laughs> <laughs> but you have to be anyway. I don't like. I want to. I want to run. <laughs> you want to run? I won't let you, Maribel. All right. <laughs> all right, Maribel. Are you ready? We're gonna listen together and we're gonna work with it. Don't worry about it. Okay. So listen to part of a lecture in an ecology class using points and examples. Cuando les piden points and examples, ustedes tienen que ser como bien específicos porque ya dieron los ejemplos. So pay attention to the examples, okay, from the lecture. Okay. Explain how the use of intermediate technology is important for rural societies, okay, Maribel. So let's just start listening to it right now. And then the last one is going to be for Roberto, all right? Seven. Listen to part of a lecture in an ecology class. Okay, uh, today I wanted to talk about intermediate technology, which refers to technology individuals can build using the materials at hand. Now, let me give you an example of the importance of this technology. In, in parts of the world, collecting fuel for home use, uh, fuel such as firewood, dung cake, or agricultural waste, is not only time consuming, but the typical patterns of collection lead to problems like deforestation, soil erosion, and ecological imbalances. Experts predict that even if food supplies are adequate for rural populations, fuel supplies for domestic consumption may not be. Considering these problems, aid organizations developed a, a solar oven. These ovens are cheaply constructed easily operated, and extremely energy efficient. The oven consists of an inner and outer metal or cardboard box, a top cover, and two panes of plain glass. The inner box is painted black to absorb solar radiation. The space between the two boxes is filled with a, an easily available insulating material, such as uh, rice husks, which because of their high silicon content, neither attract insects nor rot easily. Other usable materials are um, ground nutshells or, or coconut shells. Okay? An adjustable mirror is mounted on one side of the oven box, and this mirror reflects the sunlight into the interior of the box. A sufficiently high temperature can be maintained to cook food gradually but thoroughly. Apart from being cheap and energy efficient, the solar oven has other advantages over traditional fires. First, indoor wood fires produce smoke that causes respiratory and, and eye diseases. They're also a fire hazard, especially for small children. Also, the combustion of biofuels produces carbon dioxide, methane, and other greenhouse gases that contribute to global warming. Okay? So, this intermediate technology, the solar oven, has made a significant improvement in the lives of millions of families in rural societies. Using points and examples from the lecture, explain how the use of intermediate technology is important for rural societies. All right, Maribel, you have 20 seconds to prepare right now. All right, Maribel, you may start talking about it right now. Remember, you have to use points and examples from the lecture. Explain how the use of intermediate technology is important for rural society. That's the question here. All right, Maribel, you may start now. Oh, oh. 
<laughs> Teacher, I think. Uh, don't say uh, I think. He, don't say that. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. He was talking about the the interme intermediate technology about solar oven. Mm -hmm. uh, the solar oven is easily to operate it. And um, quiero ver. Don't say quiero ver in the right? <laughs> <laughs> no, I think uh, the use of the of the solar oven uh, produce doesn't produce smoke. Mm -hmm. And uh huh, and uh, the you know, where they use energy. No, I don't know for who uses it. I, I think the most important is solar oil. <laughs> All right, so yeah, Maribel, that's okay, Maribel. Remember that I mean, one of the examples he gives or he states during his whole lecture is the solar oven, all right? So that's what, like, that's what, that was his main example. Now, at the end, like, you would have to mention the solar oven and then explain how this, which is like intermediate technology, all right, is important to rural, uh, for rural societies. At the end of the lecture, he says, because it improves their lives, all right? That's like the whole point here, okay? Given the, I mean, he was, he was based, um, he was focusing through the whole lecture on the solar oven because this is like one of the examples people are using now on the rural societies, all right? And then he mentions that it's less, for example, it's less hazardous for the kids and it's less smoke and everything, but you need to explain how or what is the importance for rural society having this kind of intermediate technology, all right? So Maribel, igual, you have homework tonight, okay? Just add tonight or tomorrow. I want you to listen to this one in particular porque se le tocó a usted. I want you to listen to it again and again and again until you give me a nice one minute response. Donde no me vaya a decir I think, donde menos me vaya a hablar en español. All right, yes. Very good. All right, let's see. Thank you. All right. Uh, Robert, ready? Yeah. Excellent. Robert, okay, so this is the last one for you. And then, Guillermo, mañana empezamos con usted, no se preocupe. Pero igual, Guillermo, ya le voy a dejar tarea, no se preocupe. Listen to part of a lecture in a word history class using points and examples. Again, Robert, so please pay attention to points and examples from the lecture. Explain how uh, maritime nations affected the, the spice trade in Europe. All right, so that's your topic right now. Mm. I'm going to play it, right? By any chance, uh, what's the meaning uh, of a spy trade? Spice trade? Yeah, it's eh, like a, a, type, a kind of hot yeah, trade mm -hmm, mm -hmm. business or... Yes, or, yes, and it's oh, a trading. Okay, okay. All yeah, right, yeah. very good. Yeah, okay. Great, thank you. Eight, listen to part of a lecture in a world history class. For hundreds of years, the maritime trading city of Venice had controlled the European spice trade with a firm hand. Uh, various spices, including oh, nutmeg, pepper, and cinnamon, were hauled overland across Asia to the great trading market of Constantinople, where they were bought up by Venetian merchants and then uh, shipped westward across the Mediterranean to Venice. Uh, from here, the spices were sold on at mm, often excessive prices to traders from northern Europe. Uh, Venice had an almost complete monopoly of the trade Yet many of the spices originated in countries and regions which few, if any, in Europe had visited. As spices became increasingly popular in medieval Europe, Venice's merchants managed the supply to ensure that high prices were maintained. But in the uh, late 14th and um, early 15th centuries, hundreds of other maritime nations attempted to get a share of the spice trade. Until that time, European ships rarely ventured too far from coastal waters due to the lack of navigation technology and knowledge. But um, gradually, as new methods of navigation were developed, the Spanish and Portuguese learned how to successfully send ships onto the open sea. Uh, Prince Henry of Portugal 
set out to challenge the Venetians' grip on the spice trade by sending ships around Africa to India and China, thus avoiding the overland route. The King of Spain sent ships westward across the Atlantic Ocean in the hope of reaching India from the opposite direction. As is well known, the Italian navigator Christopher Columbus eventually reached the American continent by sailing westward, but didn't find the spice regions of Asia that had been his goal. Uh, within a few years, the Portuguese explorations paid off when the explorer Vasco da Gama reached the west coast of India and returned to Portugal with spices and jewels, as well as the news that the Indians were willing to pursue trade. Using points and examples from the lecture, explain how maritime nations affected the spice trade in Europe. All right. Robert, so you have um, 20 seconds starting right now to prepare. All right, Robert, you may begin talking about it right now, okay. please. First of all, it's uh, this world history class is talking about the spice trade mm -hmm. in Europe. <laughs> Taking that in consideration, it states that the first capital of the spice trade were Venice, mm -hmm. since Venice was the one uh, owning all the channels all the ways in order to begin trading with uh, spices from Asia. Mm -hmm. And as well, since they were the owners of, the, of this supply chain, mm -hmm. they were in charge of, as well of establishing the prices. Okay. As well, they have established really, really high prices for these species. This has caused that another maritime nations like Spain and Portugal tried to uh, find another way to communicate with Asia and kind of eliminate Venice as an intermediary, uh, as, as, as the one in charge of that space trade and start to trade directly with, the, with Asia. That's the reason why Vasco da Gama have started uh, a travel. Vasco da Gama was from Portugal, has started to travel to India, and he came back with uh, some species and, and jewels. And as well, that has caused the, the discovery of the the discovery of Christopher Columbus, since Christopher Columbus sent, uh, in another way, try to find uh, a way to to oh, find Asia, but right. he had discovered America. Right. That's how the spice trade has directly influenced the the, the entire yes. world history. Oh, All right. Very good. All right. Maribel, Maribel, we can hear everything, Maribel. Maribel. Very good. Thank you, Roberto. You, um, I mean, I give you a little bit more of the time because I had, we, we had this interruption here from the other um, classmates. Very good, Roberto. I mean, uh, you got what the whole lecture was about, all right? So about the spy trade and how uh, Venice was like the monopoly of the whole uh, spy trade route and everything and how they decided on the prices and everything and how Spain and Portugal got involved and how everything changed from there. Very good, Roberto. Well done. Thank you. All right. Very good. All right, guys. So um, it's almost time. Well, it's actually time to go. For the ones that I say I assign homework, that is Maribel, Saida, Freddy, and Guillermo, because you were not able to participate because of the lack of time. Uh, I want you guys to like in the case of Guillermo, you can choose any Guillermo, right? From the six uh, or yeah, six questions that we had here. You can just choose one and send me the audio with for Freddy. You have your specific one. So that's uh, Maribel, so that's Saida, all right? And uh, Rodrigo as well. All right, so thank you so much, guys. In case Nidia or uh, 
Uh, Roberto wanna send me like any audio, go ahead. I mean, I'm more than glad that, to check it and to hear from you, all right? So that's okay. It's not that you don't, I mean, if you want to, go right ahead. Uh, but for the ones that have homework, please send me the homework, all right? Listen again to the, the whole conversation or the whole lecture and make sure that you answer the question, all right? And that you talk about the, the, the question that is being asked from you, okay? Okay. So thank you so much, guys, okay. for being with, with us, with me. Tomorrow, we'll keep on talking about speaking with the question uh, four and question six on Thursday, okay? But it's the same way we're going to be dealing with it, all right? So thank you so much. I'll see you tomorrow, guys. Thank okay. you. Have a nice night. Yes, have a nice, have a nice night. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.